Y'all, it is trellis time. We're gonna talk about five different trellises that I have in the garden. I'm gonna share with you the pros and cons of each one of these trellises to see if they work in your garden and make sure to stay to the end because I have five trellis ideas that are absolutely free. So let's start with this guy right here. He is an arched trellis. And the pros of an arched trellis is, is number one, they are gonna be the biggest trellis that we're gonna talk about today. And you can make them a lot bigger than this one. But this happens to be the biggest one in my garden. Another really good benefit of an arch trellis is, is that they're super sturdy and strong. They can hold the largest of watermelons, the largest of winter squash. They do not have any problem handling the really long vines like loofahs or Puerto Rican black beans. They can handle very big plants. So the cons about an arch trellis is that it's probably one of the more expensive trellises that you can put in. And on top of that, for somebody like me who doesn't have a lot of upper body strength, I had a hard time getting these T-posts in. So I had to enlist the help of my husband. Although there are tools that you can use. I think it's like a post driver where it's like this large piece of metal that you kind of slam down on it um, that drives it down into the ground. So if you don't have you know, somebody that can help you put it in, that is an option. So let's talk about the money aspect. Basically, my trellis is made up of three, three materials, right? So there are four T-posts, one in each one of the corners. And then after the T-posts, I have animal fencing, but I've seen cattle panels are super popular as well. And then I also had to add this uh, PEX tubing. I'm gonna explain why in a minute. Oh, and the fourth one, so you need some zip ties. That's how they are held together and held in place. Now the T-posts go for about six to seven dollars a piece and you need four. Now the animal fencing, that number is going to really depend on what kind you get. Cattle panels are fairly inexpensive. I ended up going with animal fencing because at the time I couldn't transport a cattle panel. So if you're in that same boat, there is such a thing as a wire animal fencing. I have found the ones that contain or are used for dogs tend to be less expensive than the ones that are used for farm animals. So take that into consideration. But these things can go anywhere from uh, $30 for a panel all the way up to $100 for a roll of wire. You don't need much here. <laughs> We're talking maybe, I think this is like 14, 15 feet. So take that into account. You don't need a whole spool. <laughs> Because I use the animal fencing and not a cattle panel, which is much, much stronger wire, I noticed that when I was growing those really, really heavy things, that this part of the trellis sinks down. And because of that, I ended up having to put this PEX tubing. Now, PEX tubing is a type of plumbing uh, tubing. And so it is very, it, it's somewhat bendable but it's very hard to bend. So by putting the tubing up and over the trellis at the, the peak point, it keeps it curved and it allows that um, sinkage that happens in the center to stop. So the next one we have here is a straight flat panel. And so this one is very similar to the arch trellis in that it does have T-posts and it does have that paneling. So if you did get the materials to get an arch trellis, you might as well grab a couple extra T-posts and take that spool that you had or the excess from your cattle panel and use it to create a straight panel. Now the pros of a straight panel is it's pretty strong. <laughs> it's great for medium sized vining plants. The cons are once again, the cost. But if you're using up the excess from your arch panel, these are basically free. <laughs> Another negative is going to be that it cannot take those giant plants. It's quite high. I mean, this thing is a little bit taller than me for about five and a half feet tall. And so it is great for tomatoes, cucumbers, peas, beans, and even some of your larger items, like maybe if you have a short vining cantaloupe, a semi-vining squash, all of those can handle something like this. And you can do four, like I have four here. I have one set on that side and another set on this side, so that's four T-posts. Or you can just do one side. Another option, if you didn't end up going with the animal fencing and you don't have any left over, just grab a couple T-posts, get some string, and run string very tightly back and forth. You can treat it as a floor to weave where you weave in between the plants, or you could just create it as almost like a makeshift wire. And lighter plants like beans and peas can climb up the string quite easily. 
may not necessarily work for things like cantaloupe and squash, but it's a great option. Now, the next one we have on the list is this guy right here. It is an obelisk and it is a trellis that I purchased off of Amazon. All my trellises that I've done and all the materials I'm going to put down in the description below. But this trellis is a little bit different than some of the other ones. It is kind of oval shaped and it goes down. I have it going into a pot, but you can definitely just place it down into the beds or into the ground. It works perfect either way. Now, the things that I love about this trellis is number one, it's beautiful. It's made of um, a very strong metal. And so it's very, very sturdy. It has these beautiful little designs at the top. It really is a great piece if you're trying to showcase a plant. Now the cons about this particular trellis is, is that it's not super easy for plants to climb. <laughs> Thankfully, I have picked a plant. This is a corky stem passion vine. It is a native Florida plant that helps with pollinators and, and butterflies and all the cool animals out here. <laughs> but it has a unique ability with these little tendrils, kind of like a pea plant, that it can pretty much climb anything. And so thankfully, it has no problem whatsoever climbing this. But if you have something that's not like a really great climber, <laughs> it's going to struggle because there's not very many tiers to it to, to attach to. And because it's those metal bars, they're very slick. And so they fall often. And so it took quite a few months for me to get this thing to hold on to the top tiers. Um, but now that it's got a hold of it and it's kind of grown bushy, thankfully it is now holding up itself. But this one is probably more practical for those thinner plants and if you're looking for something very pretty in the garden. Now the next one on the list, and I'm just going to tell you right now, is my absolute new favorite. <laughs> I love my arch trellis, I love my panels, I love my obelisk. But this guy right here was a huge surprise. I did not know it was going to do as well as it has because of the way that it's structured. But that is an A-frame. The number one pro of this A-frame is that it is $40. <laughs> and it is huge. It goes almost the entire length of one of my eight by four foot beds. And so it is quite large. The materials that it uses right here is kind of like what you would find in a tomato cage, those green kind of plasticky uh, materials, but they're very strong and they're much larger than what a tomato cage would have. It's extremely easy to put together. These things just kind of clip into place and then you have this netting that you put on it and then you clip the netting to each one of the posts. Now because it uses netting instead of metal wire like some of the other trellises we've seen today, it's not as strong as I would like, but I have put it to the test. I've got some peas growing here. I've done some cucumbers on it so far and all of them are holding up absolutely fine. In fact, these pea plants have gotten very, very heavy and it's not having a problem whatsoever. <laughs> so I suspect I can probably grow some of the smaller, lighter vines, but I can also probably grow the shorter, medium vines. So things like short vined cantaloupes, even like the little mini cantaloupes, or even the little sugar baby watermelons would probably do fine on this. Even though this is like a netting, it is a super strong netting. Like I am pulling down and it is not breaking. It has not even shown any kind of wear and tear since I put it up. So this one definitely has made it to my very top. I love it. And one of the other things that I really love about it, I'm sorry, I'm kind of geeking out a little bit guys, is that it's movable. So some of these other ones where you're using a T-post, hammering it and pulling them up and down. Yeah, you can totally move those, um, but they're kind of like a half day project to do that. This guy, you literally just kind of pick it up out of the ground, close it together because it basically folds up and move it to another bed. And that is by far one of the things that really appealed to me about this particular trellis is because it is movable. So I'm not stuck to having only certain plants in certain beds especially when you're trying to figure out crop rotation and if you've had a disease in that bed or a pest issue in that bed and you can't move the trellis or it's very hard to move the trellis, these A-frame trellises, you can pick up and move them whenever you want. The next one we cannot forget about is going to be a tomato cage. A tomato cage is a great trellis to start with. So if you're brand new to gardening, a tomato cage is going to be your trellis for a ton of things, not just tomatoes. These are tomatillos, 
But outside of even like the tomato family, you can do peas, you can do cucumbers, you can do beans. Like I have done a ton of different things using a tomato cage. First Pro, they're very easily accessible. You can find these everywhere. Amazon, all your hardware stores, everywhere. <laughs> and they're very, very cheap. Usually you can get them for like four for 20 or five bucks a pop. Very inexpensive. Now the cons are, obviously they are smaller. <laughs> Another con that I have found that using them over and over and over again, you are gonna end up with some bending of the metal, which is less than ideal. And another thing I noticed that in Florida where we get a lot of rain and a lot of humidity, you probably will notice that some of them start to rust. So while this one is a great option, especially for beginner gardeners, and I even use it still in my garden, it, it's bottom of my list in terms of favorites. Now let's talk about our five free options. So this is the first one. This is my borage plant right here that is having a little bit of a hard time holding itself up. So I use these little bamboo sticks. Now, why are they free? Well, when I buy plants and I buy kind of a lot of plants and I have them shipped to me, like for example, with greendreamsfl.com, I have a lot of my fruit trees shipped to me and a lot of times they're shipped to me at a younger age. It's just more cost effective. But what they do is they stick these in different parts of the plant inside the box to hold the plant and the leaves away from the box and from it getting crushed. So you get free steaks <laughs> when you get plants. And I use, I save all these steaks and I use them to hold things up like these guys or cucumbers or dwarf tomatoes or tomatillos or any kind of upright plant. Peppers, oh, I almost forgot, peppers. <laughs> peppers are where I almost exclusively use these every single year and they are free. So I stick this right next to it and I usually will use like something like this, which is um, a tomato tape or you can use like twine or whatever you wanna use to tie the plant to the stake. And that's my first three way and you will see these all over my garden. Another free option is to use something like this. And if you can't guess it, this is a sunflower stalk. <laughs> I grew mammoth sunflowers, chopped the heads off, chopped the roots off, cut off all the leaves, and I left it in my um, shed to dry out. And it is completely dry. And these things are very, very strong. And so they make ideal options for steaks. And instead of using something like a tea post you could use a sunflower stalk or even a bamboo stalk and hammer this into the ground now the negative of doing that is number one they do rot at the bottom so once you push them down into the dirt they will start to rot i got one year out of my last bamboo and sunflower stakes but uh, one year is great, I thought. I think that's a great idea to use these repurposed items. You could totally put them in your compost bin, but why not give them a second life to hold up your plants? Another free option for a trellis is to grow your plants up a tree. Now, last year I grew some of my largest squashes up this sable palm tree in my backyard. I thought of the idea like, hey, you know, I've heard that the Seminole Indians used sable palms to grow seminal pumpkins or any palm to grow seminal pumpkins. And I thought, I wonder if that would work. It absolutely does. And it's not just palm trees. You can totally grow them up fruit trees. You can grow them up oaks. You can grow them up pines. You can grow them up anything where the trunk has some texture to it for it to hold on to. Now my sables have these these palm frond spikes that come out of it, which make it like really perfect to grow up. But as long as you have like branches at the bottom or you know a rough texture on the outside, you can grow them up that way. You can also circle your smooth palm trees with that uh, animal fencing that I showed you earlier. Just circle it up it and they will climb that way as well. And once they get to some of those top branches, they will use those branches to climb on. It is the coolest looking thing when they are full grown, full of pumpkins. I absolutely adore this way. This is actually my favorite, favorite <laughs> free way to use it as a trellis. And as you can see here, I already have some squash started again. <laughs> Another really great option is to use your fence as a trellis. So if you have a chain link fence or a wooden fence, those are really ideal to growing stuff up because they have texture and stuff for the plants to grab onto. 
My vinyl fence here, not the greatest for plants to climb. It's too smooth and they can't grab onto stuff. But if you, all you have is a vinyl fence, you can take some of that animal fencing again, all that extra stuff from that spool, and tack it to the side of a fence and maybe grow a passion vine up your fence. The last free way to make your own trellis is from this right here. <laughs> We've been having some super windy days and from that wind, I got some fallen branches. You know what I do with these fallen branches? I will rip all of the little leaves off these branches. Once I've gotten most of the leaves off the branches, then I will just simply push the branch end down into my bed and it will create like a half of a cage and then if I get enough of these branches I can create like an arch where I put them on either side in a line and then you can grow peas or beans or cucumbers in between them and the the plants are going to attach to these branches and over time these branches are a little bit uh, soft and wiggly and that's because they just fell from the tree so there's still a lot of life left in them but if you let them sit like in your patio or your garage or just in your garden and they were going to they're going to dry out and become very hard and once they're hard they make exceptional exceptional <laughs> trellises and i have used these my first year i did that like we had a bunch of branches that fell off of our tree in the front and i created like this arch and i had the top of them intertwine so that the the peas grew up that and it did exceptional now this guy's a little short for like the really tall peas, but I've had some smaller pea varieties that do very, very well, like sugar snap peas. Make sure to hit subscribe and notify down below so that that way you don't miss any of my tips, including trellising tips. <laughs> I hope you guys had fun today. I had fun hanging out with you. We're gonna see what all these trellises bring. Happy gardening, guys. <laughs>